there. He said, Jesus, help daddy. Jesus, help daddy. Put his hands in the face like that. And so he got down the side of the bed, and that was what he, I heard him say. If you're giving me, so I provide for my family, I'll show you. And that was all. God took his word. He never had another image. He lived till 1940. Never had. I lost any more words because of this help. And he rested a month. So after that hemorrhage, when he got home, to go back to work, it wasn't a work in Phoenix. Everything had shut down suddenly there. Yeah. There was no work. And so when Jimmy was two months old, well, we had some money and our friends had a car and we went to L.A., Los Angeles, 1921. Yeah. That's how we got let, there. Let me, let me, I told you, go play while I'm telling about this, our trips. Because, uh, I told you about our trip to play. What? No, I'm going to play in Go inside. Go take a nap. Go inside and rest a while. Go rest now, Tommy. Okay, now, all right, now listen. I want you to keep Tony in there and you keep him happy, and if you do that, I'll show you yourself on the TV. If you don't do that, I won't show you. Can you do that, Tom? And hey, Tom, you know what else? You might even get to come see us and go surfing, too. If, if, you, keep, if you keep your little brother out of the backyard for a while. A while is probably five minutes. I saw him do it as they go, but then he came back and went in the garden front and said, okay. It's after about five minutes from that. Anyway, so in, in Phoenix, when... Uh, when Buck got to L.A., you know, but, but, uh, Timmy was about two, three months old, about from the time he got there, he was between two or three months. Daddy went to work, and he never lost any more work. Went to work at Long Beach first. Mm -hmm. He stopped in L.A., and he drove the red cars to Long Beach for the first week. We got a payday, and then we went to moved to Long Beach. We lived there six months. And back to Guardian at Lottie's place for a short while to be. And then we moved to Maywood, and there is where he, we lived for. Four babies was born there in that old house. In Maywood? Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, what what year years. was it? That we had two houses, three you, there for a while. You guys bought a car in Texas? Uh, no, we, no, we didn't buy a car. We got this. We, we, Phoenix. We had our first car. Okay, you 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 Phoenix. moved from uh, from. Come by train from Texas to Pueblo. We went by train. Pueblo. Yeah. Phoenix. Colorado. Or Colorado. Yeah, and there's where we lived there. Let's see. Oh, I don't think we was there more than a year or two. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Left in 1918. And we went back to Phoenix. That was after your father lost all of his. Uh, yes, oh yes. Lost everything. Texas, there. everybody went broke there in West Texas. And so you all yeah, packed up the train. So he lived with us then. After that, he didn't have a home then, and he lived with us and we just around with us girls then. Rest well, of his life. Uh, then, well, what happened? There were four girls, right? And your brother Wesley. Yeah, so five, five, five kids. Mm -hmm. And so the uh, and and so by that time that that he lost everything in Texas, uh, uh, you were married to Wilford and what happened? What yeah, were the other three and girls? Peggy, Peggy married just before we left there too. Mm -hmm. and, and so how about Cleo and Ruby? Cleo too. Not Ruby. Ruby's just five years old. Oh, I see. oh, she's a real baby, wasn't she? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. yeah she lived with me after that for a long time and loved Lottie. With us girls until she grew up that way. Yeah. And then. Well, so. Well, his husband died before we left Pueblo. That's where the flu hit us. That's where the flu hit us. Colorado. Right there. And Lottie lost her husband. She had three little girls, and her uh, husband and the middle one died and was buried the same day. That flu first hit. That was 1918, right? Yeah. The war, the World War II was just well, over. Well, it was right just after. over. Yeah, that broke out right after the war. World War One. Yeah, World War One. Yeah. yeah. Let's get our wars right. <laughs> yeah, World War One. Yeah. I remember it killed more than I'm saying it killed more than the war did. More people. I mean, not in our country, but other countries too. Uh huh. More people's yeah. flu. Uh -huh. So, uh, uh, anyway, so you guys stayed in Pueblo for a year. Was 
I don't, maybe between the one and two years. You've been there very long. Mm. And then, uh, what, was, what was Lottie? You see, Lottie's husband died? Yeah, there, her first husband. And what was his name? Hollis, Ed Hollis. And that was uh, Mary's and uh, and Laura's daddy. Oh, I see. see. Mm -hmm. Mary was the oldest, and then Laura was 10 months old. And the year that Lottie, before Lottie got married again, I had her two kids. And uh, and and uh, Roy and the little baby girl for a year. Mm -hmm. And my father and my little sister there like, that year. So I, uh, sister I didn't get Ruby, right? yes, Ruby, Mr. Ruby. She's five. Mama's gone, you know. Yeah. Her and Daddy stayed with us. That year, I know. I don't know how much mm -hmm. longer. And then you went to Phoenix. Yeah, left there, went to Phoenix. Is that where? Is that where uh, Wilford started working on the, uh, the farm, the dairy farm, or, or, or that helped his? Uh... No, when he left, uh, when he first got sick, when we was there at Morris, when he first had that hemorrhage, he left there. He got. Um, he, he got on the train and he's barely able to carry a little suitcase. Went out to New Mexico to Albuquerque and was gone four months. And when he come back, he didn't, you couldn't tell, he'd never been sick. But it took, he got after Daddy then to sell out and go west. Yeah. And, and it took Dad three weeks to get sold out and get his wagons ready to go. And Rover had already begin to cough and show symptoms. Uh -huh. He couldn't have stayed there at all. The doctor tremendous. told him he'd die if he stayed there. He got out all by himself. That's something to remember about him. He had guts enough to leave there. That week, no money, nothing. Mm -hmm. Well, I got off the train and went to work at Terry. Mm -hmm. And of course, I was at the moment he had to be, but you'd never guess it. He just like three what boys. He was a big husky guy. And he didn't show any chest trouble. Yeah, he was big barrel chested. He didn't have no sunken chest. It looked yeah. like he was a lung patient at all. Yeah, he was, how big was he? 6'1", 6'3", or? 6'1", and he weighed around 185, and you know, over 200. Of course, when he got older, I guess he got up to 240. But that was too much. Yeah. Too bad. Yeah. Well, I, I have to say, all these, big. all these giants you got Never in the family here, is they all... But you see, your body is just, uh, it's the weakest point of it, it's all the strong you are, and that's just the way it was, that's just a chronicle. So I always tried so hard to keep my boys from smoking. Yeah. Done. Yeah. It work. Well, it's working yeah. pretty good now. Things are changing around. Yes, smoking, helping. Yeah. Smoking is yes, not right. so popular anymore. That's right. And those are smoking is trying to quit. Mm -hmm. I'm praying for them to get help and make it. Yeah. John is uh, coughing off the bed. Robin said. Oh, coughing. John is. Yes, off the bed. Uh, so from. He's making a real effort now to so, try it. Is he? Yeah. Well, uh, you know, if it's going to kill me, better. So, anyway, so uh, in Phoenix, uh, uh, what uh, what happened when you guys went to Phoenix from uh, Pueblo? Pueblo. Well, that's where that's where the, the little girl was born. The first episode of it. Okay, that, that yeah, the little born, and then she died, and then uh, then Jimmy. We lived there that long, long enough for Jimmy to be born. Another baby after her, you know. Okay, and that's so, that's where Wilford said he'd uh, he'd. That's when he prayed. Mm -hmm. That's when he prayed that God would give him his health. Too. That was seven years he'd been sick. Mm -hmm. We'd been married seven years, and that was just what it was. He'd work and get ahead a little, and then come down with a hemorrhage. And put him, put him in bed? down for a while. Yes, he'd have, well, when he left uh, Morris that time, after he'd had that surgery, and then he'd come down with that, he was in bed six days, just, just spitting up blood as fast as he could, the doctor. What kind of work Didn't was he think doing? he'd live at all. In fact, the doctor told me to leave him. Because I was just 16. Uh -huh. And he said, that boy, he's not going to live six months. And you just be sacrificing yourself. Give him up. He, he, he's gone. And you know what I said? What? I said, well, and I was only 16 now. I talk about responsibility. I said, well, I wouldn't think he'd leave me just because I got sick. So I wouldn't leave him just because he's sick. Well, <laughs> <laughs> right? I hope he wouldn't. Yeah. Right. Um, yeah, so then, then he told me how to protect myself. But, uh, against the uh, against the disease, how I could take mm -hmm. care of him. I never to kiss him, a lot of good things like that. Yeah. And I never would hurt him. Now, this is before the Lord. I never would hurt his feelings by turning away from him or turning away from his lover and things. Mm -hmm. And so I contracted it. But you know what? A month, um, I didn't get bad like he did. Yeah. 
But we lost our baby with tuberculosis. The girl. The little girl. Mm -hmm. And before Jim was born, God healed him and healed me right after he was born. So Jim never was safe. And everybody thought that I was um, really, really silly having another baby. But I missed the other one so much. I was so lonely without her that I... What you had done. And I trusted God, too. I, I, I was a Christian. I trusted God for things in those days. I didn't know as much about him as I do now, but I knew enough that, that I wasn't afraid. Yeah. And you know that um, I thought God was good to me because he healed the... I, I lost the baby, but through losing her, then I came into the church to taught divine healing mm -hmm. and how to pray, how to be healed. And Wilfred heard it, too. And uh, so... Uh, well, he was, well, I was in bed, but we stayed in bed 10 days those days when he got a baby. Yeah. Before he began to get up. Well, during that time, he got to go into revival meeting, and he couldn't wait for me to get up and go too. So he heard the gospel preached, and he believed. And God took him at his word. You didn't go to be healed or prayed for by some evangelist or anything. God took him at his word, and he, and he, uh, he had to, uh, examination when Dwayne, when Dwayne got the nail. Yeah. And they examined him and no, never could find no trace of TB. And when he passed away, he had bronchitis, but no TB. But Wilbur and didn't have any. Never did. Never come back on him. But uh, he didn't serve the Lord as well as he hoped it to. But anyway, God was good to him and healed me. And I uh, never had any traces of it to come back either. To this ripe old age. So I thought that little, that's a true, true testimony of healing, and really. Yes. And I wasn't supposed to have any more children after having tuberculosis. I wasn't supposed to have any more. But because uh, if I hadn't been healed, it wouldn't, it wouldn't have worked. Well, I mean, I wouldn't have been healed if I hadn't been healed. Yeah. See? Uh-huh. Because... Okay. Anyway. But he did prosper, and he made his living. He never had to have any welfare. He made his living until he, until he passed away. Mm. And I think that's good for kids to voice remember and trust God to, with their, their life and whatever. Well, from, from Phoenix, you guys uh, helped you stay in Phoenix how many years? It must have been, uh, well, it's to 21 from 18, 19, 20, and 21, about three years, I guess. Uh -huh. And then you, then you had it. Then when, then That's when you bought your first car, right? Yeah, it was a little one. This kind you sit down and your feet right straight out. <laughs> <laughs> we went house hunting and one day going to look for rental and I had the paper in my hand, had Roy on the lap, and I guess that was after the baby was gone, I think. And uh, there's just two seats that way, you know, and and uh, so Wilfred glanced over at the paper to see you, know, see the ad, and a uh, streetcar come right down there. And he looked up just in time in the streetcar and he threw on the brakes. But the street, the car hit the, the back steps of the streetcar. Yeah. And flung us clear around behind the car and headed back the way we came. <laughs> <laughs> and flung me and Roy out of the car about 50 feet down the tracks. And uh, when they come to pick us up, I still had him placed in my arms, hadn't let loose of him. <laughs> yeah. And he wasn't hurt and I wasn't hurt bad. Afterwards, I found out he didn't have a back, a back injury. But they couldn't get me to go see the doctor then. I brushed myself up on my life. I wouldn't even go see a doctor. But uh, it, I had got a little injury to my spine, but showed up a few years later. But God healed that, too. When it got so bad, I couldn't, instead of getting back to the chair, I was yeah. prayed for and God healed that, too. So, anyway, so much, so many good things, so many... Fun things and had a, had a good life. And some it seemed looked hard to some because I had so many children. But anyway, um, a few times I asked the Lord if it was all right with Him. I thought I had enough children, but they, but the another one came, and I, I'm glad I've had ever one. I wouldn't have missed one. So how many kids? I wouldn't have missed one. Well, you, I know you had Dad in Phoenix, right? And, well, we went back. You know, we went back to work the year that let's see, that was 29 when the, when the depression hit, wasn't it? That's when Dick was born. We went back there, over there to work, and Dick was born there. Uh -huh. That's why we had another one born. He, he was next to last. 
Yeah. Yeah. So mm -hmm. then, uh, mm -hmm. then of course, Dwayne was Dwayne born there also? No, no. See, there was two little messes in between, two babies I didn't get to keep. Oh, uh, miscarriages? Yeah. Were they still so born? So there's five years between them. Yeah. Only three months, and then I had a miracle healing there, or I wouldn't, never had Dwayne. Oh. Yeah. Another, yeah. another healing. So, uh, so anyway, so in 21 you left, uh, you left uh, Phoenix and went to and Long Beach. In Long Beach, there was six months, then back up was to that Maywood. You, you said you said it was Redondo Beach where you first saw the ocean. Oh, well, it was uh, when my dad first saw the ocean. Oh, when my dad first saw the ocean, he didn't come with us that trip. Daddy oh. didn't come out with trip. Yeah. When we did, he yeah. stayed with the, back with Peggy. Uh -huh. But when he came, Lottie had already settled in Cardina. Uh -huh. See, Lottie and and Walter had come from. Blythe, that's where they lived when they married. Yeah. And she married him, he said Blythe. Yeah. And they'd come to the Gardena, and that's where Daddy landed there, and they took him over to Redondo to see the ocean yeah. there. Yeah. And uh, um, Lot, his oldest boy, Bob, you know, Walter's oldest boy, uh -huh. when they come over the hill and looked down, he saw the ocean, he said, ooh, what a big bath. <laughs> <laughs> he called it a big bath. It's a lot of big water. <laughs> yeah. Just like a lap like that. So, so when did uh, when when did Wilford uh, get into fostering? Oh, he learned that before. We, he was 21, and I was not quite 16 when we married. Well, he was a plaster then. He oh. learned it as, when he, as a teenager. He, he was a, a complete orphan in Oklahoma, Texas. Oh, he was Both an orphan. His mother and dad was dead by the time he was in his teens. Yeah. And uh, and so some man that had a son his age took him in, some plaster contractor, took him in to be a companion to his boy, you know, mm -hmm. he had the one. Oh, I see. A companion, and that was the man that taught him the plastering trade. I see. Yeah. And, uh, and that was in New Mexico, that's how I came to be in New Mexico, I guess. And, and then, of course, Wilford went out into New Mexico and lived in a tent with one of his brothers. His family all died with him, nearly, and had and uh, so he went out and, and lived in a tent with his brother Frank, but he died anyway. He took him out there to try to get him well. Oh, from the tuberculosis? Yeah. He was so TB must have been really strong back then. It was, they knew nothing to do for it but rest and food. Mm -hmm. No medication, I don't know if they still do or not. Yeah. How'd you make out? They were my soul the minute they knew was That's all. Oh, was it? Hey. And, uh, well, I know she brought a mirror. Three dollars. And then you saw me? <laughs> For three dollars. Hey, we saw, Granny, for the first time in my life, I seen a real twister. The biggest, the big, tall twister. Over in Lancaster Hills, way oh, out there. Oh, 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 those winds. Oh, that's what, way up there. That's what a cyclone is like, only bigger. Yes. It's a little baby cyclone. So, and then it disappeared, went all the way up in the sky, and then another one started, Grandma. That's just big. And I was fighting, I told the guy, I said, look at the, what does that look like? And it was way up in the open in the desert, so you really. Oh, that's the sign of the. Mm -hmm. it, I believe yeah. it's raining in L.A. It's pretty raining. Rainy. I believe it is, I think. Put it up. Don't say that. Oh, it's got that hole in the road. Oh, good. But oh, baby, good. it looks pretty ugly down oh, south. Here's and it's clouds. It's not only it's not only clouds. Well, I, you know, I thought that, uh, I had thought that, uh, yeah, I heard something in the, uh, uh, heck, in the, uh, in the paper, there was something about, put your whistle. It's something about uh, a thunderstorms up here. We better make a phone call because if, if it's raining, we gotta have to get somebody over to cover, hole, call your dad. cover that hole in the roof. Oh, you got a hole in the roof? Well, yeah, I put. <clears throat> uh, I don't know how they work up here. I haven't seen them, but uh, I put this up, and it's really a nice item that you you know you can walk around much and help yourself. But it's a staircase. I first saw one in Alaska that you that you. Uh, it just sets up flush with the ceiling, and then you just pull a little string, and it folds down, and then the steps unfold, and you oh. just walk right up the attic. Oh, and see. then when you don't want it, you just unfold the steps, and you raise it up, and the springs pull it up, and it mm -hmm. stays up in the ceiling. Oh. OK. 
Okay, and so we were up there putting that in there, and that attic was hot. It was hot, hot. Is that in the little room out there? No, no, that was in the uh, in our house. In the house. Oh. And so uh, what? It, well, what it was, there wasn't enough ventilation uh, going coming in through the lower vents. And mm -hmm. like you, you'll see up there in the in the gables on your house, you got yeah. a vent up there. Yeah. Well, these ones that are underneath the eaves, the air is supposed yeah. to come in those yeah. and then circulate and take the hot air out the uh, upper vent, and it keeps your attic temperature down. Oh. And if the attic temperature stays down, well, then the house stays cooler. Oh. So, uh, so the attic, the whole attic itself is kind of like an insulator for the house. Yeah. Right. And so the hotter the attic is, the hotter the house is. Yeah. Okay, now it's also the reverse of true in the winter time too. Is yes. that the colder the attic, the colder the house. Mm -hmm. But mostly, it's a matter of trying to expel that excess heat in the summer time is the big problem. Yeah. And so, uh, like it was 100, it must have been 120 degrees up there. And so what I did is I went out and bought two of these turbine fans, these these uh, circular. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> you see them on the roofs. They're they're always going around. Wind's always blowing them. Yeah. Around. Anyway, so I went out and bought two of those and. Uh, and is that what Deep Durbin has on top there? Well, I think I heard something about him putting one in. Yeah, he's got one that goes out there on the top house. Yeah, it's yeah, round, yeah, goes around in circles. Yeah. yeah. Well, anyway, so my uh, my jigsaw broke when I was uh, putting the second one in, and I got the hole mostly cut out. But I don't have it finished all the way so that I can put the fan on. Oh. And uh, and so if it's raining, which uh, it's hard to believe it's going to rain in September, but if it does, oh, dear, it's going to so just... dry. I hope it does. Well, I hope it's not raining right now. Right now would be best, not with that hole I know, but we do need, I mean, up here in this place back, but I don't want to run the peaches. I guess maybe they got most of them in, they're getting there. That would be terrible. <laughs> It'd be, I, I gotta tell you, I'd come back to a house full of water. <laughs> One year, uh, I was driving out to see Lois when she lived out there, and uh, I'd go out there, I looked out, and it's so dry like that. I said, Lord, I know we're not worthy, but, but the little animals, you know, everything's dried up, even the Joshua tree is dying. I was talking to the Lord about the, the rain, you know, about when it rains so bad. Now, this sounds like, like I think, well, God heard one person. Well, he did one time, and, and it, was, well, it was three years and six months before it rained again. Remember, that's a Bible story. But I didn't expect an answer like that. I was just talking to him about it. I hoped it didn't. But no telling how many other people are praying, too. Yeah. But anyway, there wasn't a cloud in sight, and the weatherman said no rain. And next, the well, very next day, I think it was, to come up, the way the weatherman put it down, an unexpected shower, yeah. unexpected rain. But you know, afterwards I heard that uh, it streaked the peaches so they didn't, you know, didn't rot them, it streaked them so they was, Uneven. they didn't sell. Oh. So it was a setback to the farmers out there. And I know God wouldn't answer, he wouldn't do anything like that. But I, I know I got the thought. I, the thought I got was, I better attend my own business. What it did, the whole, it looked like it did the whole valley good, but I never thought about harming some people. You know, yeah. that's the way it is with your house, huh? Like yeah, the country that's right. good, but it sure wouldn't do you. That's anymore. right. Everybody prays for yeah. rain, and I can go out of town, and it. Uh, By rain in your uh, in your attic. Uh, well, yeah. I'll be praying that it won't rain in your attic. Yeah, no, I, I think it might uh, possibly, down there it's a little bit different. Uh, you'll get thunder showers back here and we won't have anything on the coast. It feels a little bit like it, someone I feel as well. Well, uh, I, I noticed in the papers that something possibly was a thunder shower. Oh, did it? Yeah. But that, you see, that's... Uh, it's humid, your humidity now, you feel it's humid right yeah, now, that's right. here. That's right, really. it is. Mm -hmm. And of course, uh, well, of course, you know, we got a little cloud cover today, make it a little, a little uh, warmer, a little cooler. Well, it is a little cooler because most of the days lately you couldn't sit out here like this at all. No way. Mm -hmm. Well, it was pretty hot when we got here yesterday afternoon. I, I uh, keep thinking about wanting this uh, it closed in, make a room out of it. I don't know. Uh, Bernie was talking the other day when she said this wind, and I said, it'd be awful nice to have sliding glass doors out where that window is. I thought they'd take away too much of my room space on the inside. Mm -hmm. That front room's pretty good size. She didn't think it was such a bad idea to fix this up out here. I mentioned it to Roy. I told him we might need this extra space if the hard times is coming, like the, the, some of the prophets say. I said, it's going to be another depression. I said, we might have some others need to move in here. 
And he said, well, I didn't need it anymore. I moved in here. And he said, if gets to where you need it, it won't take us long to wrap it up. <laughs> Pack it up? He wouldn't, yeah, he wouldn't get interested in doing it now. Yeah. Or, you know, talking about it. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> so if we didn't really need it, it wouldn't take long to wrap it up. Yeah. Well, uh... uh ready to call today? Yeah, well, we're, we've got to do that. And, and so what we need to do is... Uh, uh, give this thing a, a time and a date so we know when we're talking about it and the location. Yeah. Well, I try it again sometime when it's... Uh, well, that dog's going to get it. You want to give it to the dog? Oh. Nikki. Oh, my Well, he got it anyway. What, do you have a sandwich? <laughs> yeah, dogs have to have peanut butter and jam. I thought Tommy had after school break. He never made it, did he? Oh, yeah. No, he brought it. I, I, I just finished. I, I sat here and finished it while you doing all the gapping. <laughs> okay. Anyway, so it's, uh, what is it, the 6th today? 5th or 6th of uh, September? And, uh, I, I, and Tom, yeah. Let's see. I guess the 4th was Dee's birthday. I was thinking the 6th yeah. was her birthday. It must have been 4th. This is 5th. Yeah, fourth was Friday, uh, so this is the sixth today, September uh, '81, mm -hmm. and you know, mm -hmm. I know it, it seems kind of strange having to say that to the camera because we all know, but uh, heck, 40 or years. Are we still on the? Yeah. Oh, I, we, I, thought, I just oh, leave well, this thing on all the time. I thought you turned you know, 40 it off. years from now, you know, nobody's gonna know oh. what it was, and, oh. and all these kids are gonna be growing. That's and they right. Won't. Well, that's what I thought about some of the dates and things, but I actually had the dates. It, it really might mean something. But all I can give is approximate dates, mm -hmm. you know, but I never kept a record mm -hmm. of uh, any of it. Well, uh, that's okay, yeah. because, you know, you're talking about 1913, 19... No, what we can do it's is we can give... It's kind of landmarks, but it's uh, sort of dates. We can it? give... Uh, sort of dates, anyway. 